your skin on the outside, right here, right here. That's called subcutaneous fat. That's fat that you can actually pinch. What we can't pinch is the visceral fat. The visceral fat is on the inside of here that surrounds our organs here. It wraps around your organs that creates inflammation and interfering with organ functions that this that fat causes around the big part of your, your belly area. So if we ever have like, we look like we're somewhat having a baby here, that's uh, your subcutaneous, or I'm sorry, your visceral fat. Fat that you can't pinch. And I don't know, does the antibodies do visceral fat? They don't. They don't? Okay. So again, subcutaneous fat is fat that we can pinch here, but visceral fat is fat that's deep within. When, the, when you have the subcutaneous fat here, that's things that we have to be very cautious of things that we have because it's higher body fat because it's associated with type 2 diabetes, stroke, heart disease, and some other types of cancer. We try to, if we're in this area or even towards this, we want to take care of ourselves and lead to the healthy area to where we lower our body fat. When we lose your visceral and subcutaneous fat, your waistline gets smaller, your body percentage gets smaller. You can't eliminate all the fat on your body, nor would you want to, because we need fat anyway, but we want to have the healthy fat in there. But having some of the body fat is necessary for our body to function properly. And then of course, like with our health, lower body fat is associated with lowering our cholesterol and better insulin sensitivity. How many in here have done blood work with me? I know that there's a few of you in here. Lisa, you, you kind of have. And yeah, yeah, so what I like to do whenever you see me, and you can do this, you, all you have to do is ask uh, one of the success coaches or you can even call or text or email me to have your cholesterol and your glucose levels checked. It's pretty important so that you know if you're eating, sometimes when we think that we're eating the good foods, sometimes when you look at your blood work, it gives you an eye opener and it tells you, oh wait, you know, my cholesterol level is really high. The normal level for cholesterol, if it's 200 and below, that's considered a healthy range. Now, I'm gonna use Logan as an example. When I took his blood work, it actually was at 190, One. 191. And the doctor probably would say, oh, your cholesterol's fine, but I kinda like to do it this way. He was fasted. So if he wasn't fasted, his, his cholesterol level probably could have been higher, not fasted. But what we did is that he changed his diet a little bit and took it a week later. And it actually went from 191 to 150 something. It was incredible, whatever it was. Yes. So, and that is just by changing <coughs> what you eat. And so then, with him being in the levels of the 150s, then even if he wasn't fasted and I would have taken his blood work, it still would have been in the normal range. So that's why it's important to check your cholesterol levels. I would love to do that for all of you. And again, all you have to do is just check with your success coach, or you could get a hold of me and we can do a cholesterol glucose level for that. So, energy is very important. Lower body fat is associated with increased energy, brain, function, and stamina. So that's why when you ex uh, when you do your exercising and then you eat well, that's how you get your energy. So here, so exercise, drink more water, eat fresh, whole foods. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use Renee as an example. Sorry, I'm gonna use you without your consent. But it's it's a, it's a, it's a success story though. So Renee, Logan, and I have. Um, really been working together of, of working with Renee and I know that some of you um, have worked with Logan too about calorie intake. When Renee first met Logan, her calorie intake daily was probably less than a thousand. I think it was like in the 900s. And most of us think that, oh, if we don't eat much, then we could lose weight. And it's not necessarily like that. Actually, it's very unhealthy. So you don't want to eat less to lose weight. What we did with Renee is that I gave her a nutrition program. I, I personally trained her also. Literally in less than a week, her calories went from 900 and something to 1700. She just did her in body and she in a little over a month has lost 11, 12 pounds. And that's just from upping her calories from 900 to 1700, she was able to do that. So it does matter what you <coughs> are eating throughout the day, taking out the sugar, the processed stuff, and eating healthfully on here. Here, this is what it is, ins insulin sensitivity. Insulin is produced by <coughs> our pancreas. It regulates the amount of glucose in our body. Lack of it makes you insulin sensitivity, risk of type two diabetes. Elevates cholesterol levels like your LDL and other chronic diseases. Here is subcutaneous fat. So this is a close-up 
of your small and large intestines, how all that yellow stuff can cause inflammation inside your body and that's what makes you here. Of course, that's the healthy side right there. Cholesterol, fat in our blood, liver makes it derived from the food we eat. You cannot get cholesterol if you're eating fruits and vegetables. The only way that you can get cholesterol is if you are eating any kind of animal product. And it doesn't mean so much that you're eating beef or hamburger. We're talking about even if you are drinking milk or um, eggs, that's something that's derived from an animal. And I'm not saying don't you can't eat animal, or, but it's just telling you where cholesterol comes from. It, it comes from an animal. Here is plaque. I guess you can even say that it's even visceral. <coughs> so what I like to explain whenever you come to me in consultation, I like to explain to you the differences of the good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol. You have your HDL and your LDL. This is LDL right here. This is the bad food that we're bringing in. And you notice here how wide your arteries is here. When you're constantly eating bad, it decreases the flow of the blood that needs to go to and away from the heart. So if you hear people when they talk about, I had 90% blockage or 99% blockage, this is actually what they're talking about. This plaque that is building up in here, and the doctor has to scrape it all away, and then they put the stents to keep your artery open so that the blood flow can continue to go through. But it can also suffocate your heart too. This, the yellow plaque stuff or the subcut or <coughs> visceral fat it can also suffocate your heart. So that's pretty scary when you think about that. I actually am going to have, um, in a couple weeks, a doctor come and talk to you. I don't know if you guys know who Dr. Craig, Craig Bax is. He's an internal med doctor. I can honestly share this to you as personal reason with me. If you were to see me, you would think, oh wow, she's in shape and exercises and eats well. I do. However, went to Dr. Bax and he did a sonogram of my arteries. Sadly, he found plaque on my arteries, and that scares me to know that I have plaque on my arteries as healthy as I am. I'm 47, and I feel like I'm in the healthiest of my life, the health, healthiest I've ever been in my life. And here I'm finding I have plaque in my arteries. <coughs> Is it a lot? No, it's it's minimal, but it's enough to scare the shit out of me, to be quite honest. Because I'm sitting here thinking, wow, why I I have went plant based for like three and a half, four years now. But what got me was before I went plant based. It was the crap that I was eating. I ran from Michelob Ultra. I traveled out all to all these states and ran marathons everywhere, but took advantage that I could run 20 miles, burn all these calories, and what would I do? I'd go to the office and eat their luscious office burgers because it's like, oh, I can do that. No, you really can't because in the long run, pun intended, it affected me. And how it affected me was questions that Dr. Bax was asking me. Emily, when's the last time you've been to the dentist? And I just kind of laughed at him like, gosh, I don't even know. And he's like, how are your gums doing? I go, well, to be quite honest, last week um, my gums were bleeding, and as I'm talking to right now, I can feel them, they're still inflamed. And he's like, that's where your bacteria is coming from. So bad food doesn't always just affect your arteries or here. It can affect your, 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 your gums in your mouth. So the bacteria that was growing, that is growing in my gums, is affecting my arteries right here, and that's where the plaque is. So that's scary. You know, you're looking at me, and, and I'm unhealthy. So it, it actually makes me emotional because now I'm, I have to go see a, a dentist specialist, Dr. Lisa Banks, so that she can fix my teeth so that I can help get rid of uh, the plaque in my arteries, hopefully. So you'll get to meet Dr. Banks, er, Dr. Banks, uh, Dr. Bax. And another neat thing, which we are starting to do, I actually met with uh, Dr. Imhoff, Dr. Bax and I did, and he's training me to do sonograms of the arteries. Of course, what I do, I'm not diagnosing you, but it's a screening test. So that'll be another thing while Dr. Bax is still teaching me how to do it. I'll get to scan your arteries to de detect if, if, po if you possibly have plaque on your arteries. So I can check your cholesterol and your glucose level and scan your arteries as a preventive measurement. And if I do see something, then Dr. Bax then would be able to do an extensive <coughs> sonogram of your arteries and what she did with me. Not a lot of clubs do that for you, right? <laughs> so which part do you want? I would think that you would want this one, because there you go, there's all that visceral fat that's all over your heart. That's the crappy food that we eat right there. That's scary too. Here's the green, like a stoplight, green, yellow, and red.
and those are all the organs that the visceral fat can suffocate around there. And you know, whenever I mean, it can affect your spine. So then, if you're having back pain, a lot of that is because you've developed the visceral fat around there too. So when you are working out with your trainer and you're doing these classes, it's so important to know your anatomy because if you are having back pain, do you fix your back? Well, yeah, of course you do, you fix your back, but then look at the connection of it. It's connected with your glute, gluteus maximus, gluteus minimus, your butt, also connected with your hamstrings. So you work all those areas to fix this. If you're having issues with your butt, you fix this area. If it's this area you're having hamstring issues, then you fix these too. And in the front, it's not so much if you want to fix your core area, you want to strengthen your hip flexors, your quads. So know your anatomy. So if there's like a certain area you fix, you fix the surrounding areas as well. That helps get rid of the visceral fat and also strengthen your muscles. So how do you know if you have visceral fat? Well, of course you can tell by looking at yourself, but then on here, this area right here, sadly it's a, an explanation on women, but right here or even here around the hip area. But of course, measurement, but you, you would be able to tell by <coughs> your eyes right there. And you know, in every, every body, and that's two words, every body is different. And I'm using myself as an example again because I, it doesn't matter if I look like this. I could be clearly unhealthy, which I definitely know before I changed into being plant-based, that I had a lot in, in this area, and that's because I had a sedentary job. And, um, you know, I was skinny fat, if that makes sense. And, and again, just because I look like this doesn't mean that I'm healthy. I, I was very unhealthy. So I did, I changed, I changed my eating and um, thought that I was in better shape, but <laughs> now I got plaque in my arteries. There's your nutrition not your nutrition, not your diet. And the reason why I say not your diet because diet can be short term, so you wanna make a nutritional lifestyle. You just keep moving forward and you keep doing it. You make it a, a habit. So on here, you got your healthy fats. And again, I'll, I'll send you guys notes of these foods. Avocados, eggs, olive oil, fatty fish, coconut oil, macadamia nuts, almond butter, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, flax seeds, cheese seeds, and ghee. But just because these are healthy fats doesn't mean you don't exercise. You still need to exercise even though that you're eating the, the healthy fats on here. There's your protein, dairy, nuts, eggs, whey, legumes, 100% grass-fed meat. That's the healthier meat. And I want you to know the difference of vegan, vegetarian, and plant-based. Vegan is strictly nothing with animals at all. I mean, you can't even wear something that's made animal product. Vegetarian, you can have your eggs and your butter and some milk, but you just can't really have the meat. Plant-based, which I'm plant-based, you can have meat, but 90% is fruits and vegetables and that 10% is meat. So even though you hear Logan joking about the way that he eats, he's actually really plant-based. I eat mostly plants, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, and he has his meat, but his meats are, we, we joke about it because his meats are four legs, mine are fins, I do fish. So, but I mean, when he jokes about it, he, he really is, he's, he's plant-based. There's the more vegetables, so really any green vegetables, slow burn, carbs, quinoa, brown eyes, Ezekiel bread. I'm sorry, I don't like Ezekiel bread. Have any of you tried it? It tastes like cardboard. <laughs> you have to burn to taste it. Yes, yes. It's like beer. <laughs> but, it, but it's healthy for you. The whole grain pastas, sweet potato, avoid sugar, drink a lot of water, limit alcohol and exercise. I wanna go back to this, whole grain pastas. So this was me when I was running all my marathons because if you're a runner, what do you want to do the night before before you run? You want to carb load. Yes. And most runners, they want to eat the white pastas and the white bread to carb load. And, and that's great, yes, but it's an unhealthy one. And honestly, I think that's what got me because there's also hidden sugars in there too. So if you're going to be having the pasta, have all the colors except for white. You know, so I like last night I had edamame pasta. And I like the black bean pasta, but my husband doesn't because he's like, I don't like that my stomach in trouble. I'm like, but I love it. But anyway, but yeah, as long as your pasta is white, don't choose that one. Here. Breakfast, here's like a little summary of an example. Lean protein, healthy fats, slow burn carbs, 
lunch, slightly bigger portion of your proteins, healthy fats, and carbs. Dinner, protein, carbs, veggies, healthy fats. And it doesn't mean you have to go strictly by this. This is like if you, um, just like a, 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 a certain amounts of what you could have on breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Uh, I don't know, Logan, do you have any? No, I think that? I think that's a, a good base. It's uh, what, what did Kathy always talk about, half your plates uh, vegetables, mm -hmm. and then a quarter of your plates uh, protein, and then a quarter of your plates uh, fat or starch. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I do want to say, though, what I see a lot of people doing is, especially at breakfast, is mixing carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they do oatmeal on top of blueberries and bananas, and they stay away from protein sources. Yeah. Every meal should be balanced, right? So. Carbs are generally better taken in the first thing in the morning, but make sure you're still getting your protein, make sure you're still getting your fat, and just balance out every meal as best you can. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. Any questions? I do want to add, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to say this too, and the reason why I also wanted to make sure that I got your email, I want to also share to, to simply, I think, Logan wants you to log in all your foods to MyFitnessPal. Is everybody Hopefully on MyFitnessPal? Okay. So what I want to do is that I want to send you a few recipes here and there. And I send this to my own clients and I'm very happy to share it with you guys too. I think some of you probably have it already. But um, anyway, what it is, it's, it's um, either going to be something with plant-based or it will be uh, protein meals with uh, uh, healthy protein with, with meat or uh, food or greens and uh, fruits and vegetables anyway. But it's neat if you're on the MyFitnessPal, instead of seeing all the ingredients on there and having to manually put it in, there's a scan bar. You scan it and boom, it puts it all in there. So it'll automatically put your calories and all of your macros. And, and it's really neat. So in every page you look at, you get to see my face. <laughs> it's like I'm gonna be embedded on in your memory the whole time. So that's why I wanted to have your emails so, so that you know, it's simple just to do it. And I don't know, Renee, you have, you've made a, a few things on there too. And I really like the pancake. Yeah. yeah, she loves the with blueberry pancakes. Blueberry and banana. then you do like to do the toast with the avocado on there. So, but yeah, so I want to share the same thing I give you because again, you know, that's what really helped Renee up her proteins up. And then, you know, in, in one month she's lost about 11 or 12 pounds and no more of that 900 calories a day. She's up to 1,700 and that's pretty, pretty awesome. You know, and then she's like, have you ever had anyone that nails exactly at 1,700? I'm like, no, I don't think so. And I think I asked you that too. And she, last night she sends me her macros and it was like 1,700. I'm like, are you kidding me? She actually did it. <laughs> 18 calories yeah. away, thank you. Yes. So, but what, what she was missing like with her proteins and now, you know, again, I always ask Logan, and I'm like, what can she do to add on? So what we did, we told her to have a protein shake in the morning. And that's always good to have. And I, know, I don't know if most of you fast, I fast. I work out fasted, but what I like to do, I also work out pretty early in the morning. But my first thing I like to do is to have a protein shake and that, that helps me out a lot. I don't know, what are your thoughts on, on that? Uh, you know, I think uh, real food is always best, mm -hmm. but if you lack something, mm -hmm. um, if you struggle with the meal, whether it's missing, whether it's just, you know, you go to lunch and you're always going out to eat, replacing it with something that you know has a good breakdown of macronutrients, I think that's a that's a good call yes. and a relatively cheap call too. Just make yeah. sure if you guys do do something like a protein shake, get something that's third party tested, get something that is manufactured in a pharmaceutical grade facility. Mm -hmm. That way it ensures the quality of what's actually in there because there's a lot of crap in stores and it's hard yes. to know what is. Yes, and like with me, like my protein shake, I do put all whole foods in there. And Adam actually gave me. Uh, he was Adam Martin. He's a trainer over at West. You probably would know who he is. But he was drinking something at lunch, and I'm like, what is that? And he's like, it's my lunch. And I go, oh, well, what's it? And then I put my phone up to him, and I made a voice text. But it's it's all whole foods, pretty much. Um, matcha powder, spinach, chia seeds, oatmeal, almond, cashew milk, black seed, almond, butter, Greek yogurt, honey, cinnamon, turmeric. And this is him talking, and then he talks into my phone. And then I do like uh, frozen blueberries, <laughs> strawberries, and blackberries. And then he says, thank you very much. <laughs> so, but I would love to share that with you. I'll email. But that was like really good. I tried it and like, oh, wow, it filled me up. But, you know, all the essential 
vitamins and nutrients in there. And you had a question, and I'm sorry. Did oh, a few times, you know, you mentioned breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, I was wondering what you think of this intermittent fasting. I intermittent fast every day. And I'm going to say what I do, and Logan explains it a heck of a lot better than I do. But I always try to have my last meal around 8 p.m. And then I do 12 hours. I think Logan does his differently, but I do every 12 hours. So 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. I have nothing to eat, but I'll have either water or if I have my black coffee, then it's plain black coffee because that still puts me in a fasted state. And then I work out fasted. I feel like I have more energy. My glucose levels are higher and I don't feel as groggy. And then after I do my workout, so around like 8 or 9 a.m., then I have my breakfast, which is usually a toast with avocado or I'll put um, uh, tomatoes on it or if not then I'll have my almond butter peanut butter and bananas on there and so yeah I, I actually you can explain more about it yeah I mean it's, it's for what most people use it for, for why most people succeed it's a form of controlling calories um, it's not a bad thing. I think it's a good thing to do uh, as a lifestyle, but just understand that that's why people generally see success. It's because, you know, we don't want to be in an extreme caloric deficit like 700, 800, 900,000 calories because what happens when we get in that caloric deficit, over time, we be, begin to eat away at muscle. And muscle is really what powers our metabolism, right? 50 uh, calories are burned for every pound of muscle you have. So if I'm constantly in a severe caloric <laughs> deficit, guess what, over time, I'm going to lose muscle, and that means my metabolism is going to slow. And that's why people who are eating not that much, eventually, they stop losing weight. And then guess what happens? Eventually, they start gaining weight, right? So by having being in a slight caloric deficit, by giving a nice breakdown of macronutrients and eating things like whole foods, we can lose weight, maintain, and sometimes even build muscle. So it's, it's kind of the, the perfect storm for success. Intermittent fasting is awesome. It's great. I've done it before. Uh, I used to. I, I lost 90 pounds to intermittent fasting. I didn't know that's what I was doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. It's like you were just skipping this, breakfast. I was, no, I went. I had one meal a day, and I, I didn't do it the right way. All right, because I did it back in 2003. I was 260 pounds, and by the end, in like eight months, I was 170 pounds. Um, I learned a lot after that, right? But the most important thing, and this is just universal. Find what fits your lifestyle. Find what you enjoy and you can do. So, you know, we've talked about keto before. I think keto has some benefits, but I don't think it's sustainable because it's very, very restrictive of what you do. Some people can do it, I find that most of them. Intermittent fasting is great. Some people live a very, very hectic lifestyle, and that just works really well for them, right? That way they don't have to worry about eating for 12, 16, 20 hours, 36 at Randall's was crazy that one. I don't recommend that myself. Um, but find what you enjoy, find what you can do, and as long as it's healthy, as long as it's sustainable, then just do that. Don't don't get focused on fads. Do what's sustainable. Do what you like to do. Because if you don't like doing it, guess what? You're not going to do it for long, right? Does that yeah. help? And like I said earlier, every body is different. So if I intermittent fast, does not mean that it's fit for somebody else? Like I, again, I do the 12 hours. Some people will uh, fast for... 16, 16, 16, 16 hours, and then they have their eight hour uh, when eating, window eating. I think, and it's really important, don't fast, or sorry, don't work out, and then fast for a long time. Like, she's, she's fasting and ending her fast right before a workout, that's perfect. But if you work out in the morning, and you don't eat until the evening, oh gosh. Yeah, yeah, muscle can break down, lots of things can happen. So just make sure if you are fasting, and make sure you schedule a meal directly after a workout. So it's okay to... To not eat, because I usually don't eat until 9 a.m., but when I work out at 5.30, it's like, mm, I think I need, maybe it's just up here, I just have a piece of toast with olive oil on my way to work. So it's really kind of better just to not. Depends. I, I was like, ooh, maybe I need something before I work out. Everybody's a little different, yeah. again. Everybody's different, yeah. yeah. And find what works for you. Um, I would recommend, like, fa uh, fast doing fasted cardio. I think it's a good thing. Um, I don't know about high intensity, and I don't, I don't know what your, your regime looks like. Yeah. Weight training, um, some people don't respond really well if they go and they weight train up in the stomach. Right, right. right. see, so I'm doing that. Yeah. Weight training up in the stomach. Yeah. 
years. Yes, yeah. and I, I do agree with that. If I if I'm doing a, a running workout, I can I'm better at fasting with that. But if I know I'm going to do a boot camp or a fierce or intensity or something like that, I will have something little to eat because I know I'm going to actually burn a little bit more calories. My muscles are going to work a hell of a lot harder than it will with running. And I always have my drink, and it's not just water. I have some kind of electrolyte in there. I have recommended this to a lot of people. Um, Renee obviously uses it or whatever, but um, when we work out, we burn carbs and we lose electrolytes. So while we are working out, burning carbs and losing electrolytes, we need to keep replenishing it. So I use these uh, Noon tablets, it's N-U-U-N, and it's highly recommended. I found it, um, I knew about it because a lot of runners that I follow, they use it and they're able to sustain during their high intensity workouts. I noticed that when I went to Jimmy Sunnyborn's uh, boot camp, because if you go to his boot camp on your birthday, you have to do that many reps of your age. So you gotta do a lot of reps. Yeah, so I was 47, <laughs> and I knew going in there we were gonna do 47 reps of everything. So what I did, I dropped my electrolyte tab in my water, and everybody else was dying, but I'm like, come on, let's go. They're on their hands and knees, and I, I sustained a lot longer than everyone else. I killed everybody in the crab water. Like, yes, <laughs> I got it, my little legs. I was, was about to say, everybody. yeah, that's because you're yeah, <laughs> and the bear walk. And, but the only thing I didn't couldn't do was when we were doing the damn stairs up and down it, it, over at West. But I was able. But you have to remember that electrolytes. So if you're doing those higher intensities, yes, I do recommend. At least it works for me. I had to eat a little bit more, and I had to have electrolytes. Water really doesn't do it for you. Um, so I would I would say stay away from the Gatorades or even the Body Armors because there's so much sugar in there. The tablets, it's truly specifically just for electrolytes, and it has this much sugar and this much calories, and um, yeah. Are they flavored? Yes, yes. Um, um, I'll put in an email and I'll show you. You can get them at the Running Center or you can order them on Amazon. Walmart, or, yeah, Walmart, Hy-Vee, Target has them, but I'll send a snapshot of it. But it's amazing how, if you are constantly replenishing, how you can just keep on going. So, any other questions? Yeah. before I work out because I get sick. It'll mm -hmm. like make me want to throw up. So what's a good like carb or protein carb? They always say sandwich or carbs. Sure. Um, so you don't get really high spikes. But mm -hmm. so what's a good one that I can eat at least a couple hours before sure. that will hold me through a workout? Do you like peanut butter? I love peanut butter. I would, uh, my, <laughs> my go-to is peanut butter with um, uh, bananas on it. And you can get just as much as protein of, of having that and, and energy sustained with the carbs in it. That's that's, yeah, my, that's always carbs, my go-to, especially with the muscle workouts, yes. like the weightlifting. Because my I will plummet. Yes. Like and it'll spike and then it'll just yes. drop. What about some beans or quinoa? Absolutely, that's I mean, power for me. Uh, yeah. Do yeah. When um, <laughs> actually, no when I know that I have like a um, a fast race the next day or it's mm -hmm. coming up throughout the week, my my go-to power is is beans. So, yeah, that, that's a that's it's great. because I'm plant-based too, yes. but 100% eat meat. Yes, yeah. <laughs> beans. Yes, yep. I love, I love beans. That's always a power and great source of that too. So, that try that. And um, oh, there's something else before we go. That I was gonna say, like you can smash beans. Yes. On toast. Mm -hmm. Like the Ezekiel, then you yes. Can, you know, then you got some, then you got some stuff. <laughs> and then you got a complex carb, and then you got the protein with the beans on. Mm -hmm. But where's the joy? Right. <laughs> 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 that one, that one, this is joy, that one. Yeah. Well, I don't want to keep you too much longer, but if you have any questions, it, my email is really easy to you know, Emily at Fit Club, Fit Club. Fitclub.net, Emily at Fitclub.net, but I'll send you a recap of tonight and you can uh, reply if you have any other questions. I know there was something else I was getting ready to tell you, but I, I don't know what it is. But thank you so much for coming in. I hope that you guys continue to come every Wednesday. <laughs>